Hello everyone. In this lesson video, I will be discussing limits in the subject basic calculus. I am your teacher, Mr. Mark Anthony Laroya. Before we proceed with limits, let us talk first about function. Let's say we have the function f of x equals x plus 3. The value of our function depends on the value of our x. Now, if we're going to talk about limit, we are talking about the value of our function is approaching as x approaches a certain value such as a. So, we have now this expression for limits, the limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to L. We are looking again for the value that our function is approaching as x approaches a. We are not really after the value of the function if x is equal to a. Using the same function x plus 3, we're going to look for the limit of x plus 3 as x approaches positive 4. Let's say we're going to put values for our x coming from the right or coming from the left side. These are the inputs approaching 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So these are the inputs coming from the left approaching the value of 4. And these are the inputs for x as x approaches the value of 4, 9, 8, 7, 6, and 5. If we're going to substitute these values with our f of x, we're going to have these following values. Coming from the left, the value of our function is 0 going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And as our x approaches 4, the value of our f of x is approaching the value of 7. Same goes coming from the right side. The value of our f of x, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, is also approaching the value of 7 as our x approaches 4. The limit of a function describes the behavior of a function in the vicinity of a number as opposed to the value of the function at the given number. It tells us the approximate value assumed by the function in the vicinity of the given number. So therefore, we can say that the definition of the limit in our example refers to the so-called two-sided limit since there are two ways or directions to approach the number a on the real line from the right or from the left. Let us now find the limit of the function x squared minus 1 all over x plus 1 as x approaches 0. So we're going to use again the table of values to look for the limit, to evaluate the limit. Coming from the left, you have negative 0 0.9 up to negative 0 0.1. So the value of x approaches 0. And coming from the right, you have negative 9 going to negative or rather 0 0.9 going to 0 0.1. And again, from the right, it approaches the value of 0. Now, the value of our function coming from the left will be negative 1.9 going towards negative 1.1 until it reaches the value negative 1 as x approaches or equal to 0. So it means that coming from the left, the value of our function approaches the value negative 1. And coming from the right, we have negative 0 0.1 up to negative 0 0.9. It means that the value of our function from the right is also approaching the value of negative 1 as our x approaches the value of 0. The limit from the left. The limit of our function x squared minus 1 all over x plus 1 as x approaches 0 negative 
this symbol or sign negative tells us that it is coming from the left is negative 1. The value of our function is approaching the value of negative 1 as our x approaches 0 coming from the left. And the limit from the right, you have the limit of the function as x approaches 0 plus or from the right side is also negative 1. The table suggests that as x approach 0 from either direction, f of x approaches negative 1. A two-sided limit such as the limit of the function as x approaches 0 equals negative 1 exists only if the two one-sided limits exist and are the same, that is, if f of x approaches the same value as x approaches a given value from either side. Let us now identify the limit of the function x squared minus 1 uh, all over x plus 1 as x approaches negative 1. The value negative 1 is not a domain of the function because it will only make the expression undefined. We can actually simplify this function because x squared minus 1 is the same as x plus 1 times x minus 1. So we can simplify this entire function as x minus 1. But still, we will use this uh, original function in finding the limits as x approaches negative 1. So using our table of values we have, it shows here that if we're going to use the original expression or function, if x is negative 1, it is undefined. But again, we are not really after the value of the function as x approaches negative 1. Because if we're going to substitute the value negative 1 to our function, it will really become undefined if we're going to use this original function. But if we're going to simplify this, as we've said, if this is equal to x, or this can be simplified into x minus 1, that will be our new f of x. So as our x from the left approaches negative 1, the value of our function also approaches negative 2. And as our x approaches negative 1 from the right side, the value of our function also approaches the value negative 2. So the limit of the function x squared minus 1 all over x plus 1 as x approaches negative 1 from the left is equal to negative 2. And the limit of the function x squared minus 1 all over x plus 1 as x approaches negative 1 from the right side is also negative 2. Therefore, the limit exists for this function as x approaches negative 1 and that is negative 2. The limit of the function x squared minus 1 all over x plus 1 as x approaches negative 1 either coming from the left or from the right, the limit is negative 2. The following are several observations about limits. The definition of limit implies that the values of a function cannot approach two different limits at the same time. Therefore, if the limit exists, it is unique. A limit may not always exist. Sometimes a limit does not exist because the values of the function do not approach some unique number or the same value from both the left and the right of an x value. A limit can exist even at the point where the function is not defined since limits indicate behavior of the function near some x values and not the x value. This implies that a function as the independent variable approaches a point does not depend on the value of the function at that point. 
So this is an example of a function where limit does not exist. If we put values for x as it approaches 2, the value of our function goes toward the negative infinity, while coming from the right, as our x approaches the value of 2, the value of our function becomes positive infinity. The graph shows that the limits coming from two different directions from the left and the right does not, the, the value is not unique. The one is negative infinity and the other one is positive infinity. So the limit does not exist. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you learned something new about limits. See you again next time.